what you need to realise is that um, sailing is all about opportunity. Why she's laughing. <laughs> this is about the eighth time I've done this. We've had so many camera failures at some train. So, sailing I'm... Northern Ireland, take eight. <laughs> and it is actually number eight. Oh, we thought we'd just give you a summary of our sailing and cruising around Northern Ireland. Uh, we left uh, Liverpool in late May mm -hmm. and um, we uh, cruised through the night. Um, and we got to Port St Mary. As you can see here on our laser scoreboard supported <laughs> map. And um, we managed to uh, just about get a cup of coffee. Well, we're only having a coffee break here at Peel. No, not. Beep! Well, we're only having a coffee break here at Port St Mary because the ideal time to go through the calf of sound, calf of man, is in half an hour's time. So we're going to have just enough time to have a coffee and then we're yeah. off. Before it was time to go through the Calf of Man. Mm -hmm. um, and we went to Peel. And we went to Peel. Now the Calf of Man um, is actually a lot easier if you get the um, timing right. If you get right. the timings right, I'd recommend you go through the Calf. But you've got to get the timing right. It's a very narrow window to get through the Calf. So nip into Port St. Mary and ask. Yeah. Um, but we got it right and it was so easy to go round there rather than going around yeah. the Calf of Man, so much so better. We went to Peel, which is one of our favourite spots. We like the Isle of Man and Peel is one of our favourite spots in the Isle of Man. But very quaint little place and it does feel like you're going back in time, so... Mm -hmm. um, great little place and it's a great stopping off point it's a wonderful stopping off point <coughs> i'd just like to give a big thank you to whoever put the isle of man where they did because it's a lovely little rest stop as we're cruising the irish sea um from uh, peel we came up to carrick fergus we did indeed and, and carrick fergus has our award for um the best bathroom it does. It's got a fantastic bathroom um, with a boat and everything like that. And it's a beautiful bathroom. It's also the home port to a boat named Prudence. So somebody got very excited about that. Yeah. But the reason we went there was to meet up with the Sailing and Cruising Northern Ireland Facebook group because they had organised an event up in Ballycastle and we were going to join them in a little flotilla going there. Yeah, now um, the way we did it uh, was we came out of Carrick Fergus Marina and uh, we went up the coast um, using the tide uh, and we went into Glen Arm. We did. Um, we stayed there while the t rev tide reversed and then we got the next tide going north um, and it was all about timing it at the top. Yes, because when you get up to the top, you've got Torhead, and then at the very top, you've got Fairhead uh, between it and Rathen Island. And the tidal streams through there are extremely strong. And if you hit them face on, you will just stop. You might even go backwards. You will not get round the headland. So your timing's got to be just perfect to get round that headland. And by leaving Glen Arm as the tide was going north, it meant that we had six hours of tide with us to go round the corner. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we came into uh, Ballycastle. It's 8.44 in the morning and it's time for a second breakfast. Uh, to meet up with the um, guys and girls from Sailing Cruising Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. And um, it was also um, the Maritime Festival was on. That's what it was all about. Um, so there was lots of things to do, see... Um, and do really wasn't there there was so um, we met up with the people from there we had nights out uh, with them things like that we met up with Skipper James we met up with Skipper James who introduced us to a wonderful new brand of bilge cleaner called um, book bath <laughs> feeling that you can always drink it <laughs> oh <laughs> I find it works very well for polishing the table um <laughs> But um, anyway, uh, Bally Castle gives <laughs> what us. What happened on the boat stairs in the boat? <laughs> Bally Castle 
gets the award for the best chippy. Yes, it does. From Morton's Chippy on the um, top of the slipway. Um, when you go in, they've got a big sign up and it says, if you need gluten free, just tell us and we'll make it up. And they did. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, because I have to have gluten free food. Uh, it's just so nice to have a chippy tea. Yeah. So she just walked in and said, I'll have that. And they said, OK. Excellent news. So mm -hmm. um, we also, um, we did actually catch the ferry across, didn't we, Beverly? We took the ferry over to Rathen Island. We could have sailed there because they do have a small harbour with a uh, pontoon for visiting boats, but we were feeling very lazy that day and we just popped across on the ferry. Um, but uh, Rathen Island is a great place for wildlife uh, because you've got a puffin sanctuary there to see the puffins and unfortunately loads of guillemots. Every guillemot in the world is in Rathen Island, particularly at the Western Lighthouse, trust me on this. Um, but, you know, so the lighthouse is quite an interesting place because it's upside down. Yes. Um, one of the very few lighthouses which actually has the light at the bottom and the accommodation yeah, at the top. Up, at the top. Um, and you can also see seals in the harbour and things like that. There was no penguins on Puffin Island because she stayed in Ballycastle. Uh, but, as I say, there was some lovely seals and you could get quite close to those. You could. Um, After Bally Castle and the festival was over, we headed west to Port Rush. Which we did actually call Port, Port Slow because it was so quiet. It was pre season, um, it was raining, and it was very quiet. It was, we had the place to ourselves, apart from one minor problem. We also had a dredger. dredger. <laughs> Um, yes, so Port Rush wins the Dredger Award for frightening me out of the wits at like four o'clock in the morning. Um, when I, I heard this large roaring noise, looked out the back and saw a huge bucket coming over the back stay. I did, however, manage to get a deal there, uh, purely because I argued that the dredger is not part of your harbour experience. <laughs> so if you do have something that's not quite right, <laughs> then you can always just say... Well, it also has to be said about Port Rush that on the approach, if you get nice weather, the coastline is oh, spectacular. Stunning. You've got, you've... you've got the Causeway Coast. You've got basalt cliffs that just go straight down into the sea. It's wild. It's rugged. And it's got no shelter. So once you're going west, you're committed. Yeah. Um, while I remember, um, Glenn, we got a deal in Bally Castle as well. But that was because we were part of a part, group. Part of a group. We got a group deal there. We got a group deal there. So um, another great deal, wasn't it, Beth? It was, yes. So after we'd um, done the port rush, yep. we slipped into the alternative dimension called Scotland. And we have got a link uh, to our sailing, cruising Scotland uh, summary up here. Yep. Um. And we sailed around Scotland for a couple of weeks and then we came back, back to, to Glen Arm, um, which is a great place for dropping, uh, coming back to or if you're going to go up to Scotland, it's a great place. Yeah, it's very close to the Mullican Tower. So basically you come out of Glen Arm and you just go straight across the North Channel to um, round the back of the Mullican Tower or up into the Inner Hebrides. So it's, it's a good jumping off point. Or as it was for us, we came back to Glen Arm. Now, Glen Arm has got a great deal. Uh, basically, if you pay for the first night, you get the second night free. Um, it really does encourage you to um, stay in Glen Arm for to, extra ex day. to explore the place. Um, but it also was a great place just to have a little bit of a rest, to be honest. It's a nice little marina just to pop into and have a break. It's a small town. There's not a lot to it, but it's nice to be there. Mm. Um, we didn't get the time in coming out of um glen arm right but, right uh, and basically the weather hadn't calmed down as much as we thought it had and we had to nip into our lock for some shelter but a big thumbs up to east antrim boat club uh who let us have a mooring there um for the night mm -hmm. um thank very, you very much yeah very interesting mooring because it was right next door to the ferries. Yeah, you make sure you've got all your mooring lights left on all overnight. You switch on every light in the boat. Trust me on this. Yeah. So, um, but it was still nice to um, go in there. It was lovely to have a rest, even if it was a touch rolly, thanks to the ferries and the tide coming in. But it was a lot better than being out in the channel. So it was um, from um, Lawn Lock. It was uh, a back to Carrick Fergus. Back to Carrick Fergus. And um, Carrick Fergus has the deal where, because it's part of the East Antrim. 
Mid Antrim. Mid Antrim. Um, so it's run by the council. So you get this pay one night, get the second night, get free. the second night free. Uh, excellent uh, marina because it's got five gold anchors, anchors, and it's also great for things like your food shopping. Yes, I mean the marina. You come out of the marina. There's a road and a car park, and on the other side of that car park is Sainsbury's. It's Sainsbury's car park. Um, there's also a cinema there. There's also a pub there. Um, two pubs, I think, actually. Well, there's, they're on the marina. There's the pub. There's, there's a marina on the pub, and then there's a marina on the car park. There's one just on the side. Oh yeah, so there's two pubs, very very close. You've got the town nearby. You have got the touristy stuff like um, President Jackson's birthplace. You got the castle. So you know there's things like that. Um, but you know it's a nice marina, very friendly, and um, very good know, marina. Really, it's it's a good marina. Um, the other nice thing about um, Carrick Fergus is. Um, Carrick Fergus Yacht Club, a really friendly bunch, mm -hmm. and they invited us to our regatta, but that's a bit later. But yeah, we, we bumped into them for a regatta. Um, no, that was a little later on, but you know it was lovely to be invited to their their do and the rest of it. So thank you very much for that, guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, from uh, Carrick Fergus, we went over to Bangor. We did indeed, and Bangor won our award for what we consider the most professional marina because oh, it, just. Just the sort of like the operation, the fact that it's 24 hours. What time is it in the morning? Uh, it's 20 past seven. Because they've got really good staff, they've got good marina and all that sort of stuff. You know, it just... It's, um, it's another five gold anchor marina, so it and Carrick are very much on an equal sort of footing, but different facilities. I mean, Carrick, you've got the supermarket at your doorstep, but Carrick's a small town. Bangor's a bigger town, so you've got more facilities on your doorstep, but the supermarkets are a lot further away. So, I mean, swings and roundabouts. But you do have Todd's Navigation, and you go for good chandlers. And you've got hardware stores. You know, so Whereas it's... over at Carrick, the nearest big hardware store would be like six miles away. Here, it's like 600 yards away, so... You know, bit of a difference. Mm. Um, but yeah, the marina is well run. It's another five gold anchor one. And if you are a key marina berth holder, then you can have a reciprocal deal with this one because it's also a key marina. I think it's 30 days free of charge because of the deal. Um, if you're a member of a Trans Europe marina, then this is also a Trans Europe marina in Bangor. So you get five, five days, days at uh, half, half price. price. So that's, um, that's a really a, good deal to know about. Yeah, but Bangor is a key marina or a Trans Europe marina. You've got to be in a marina from one of those to get those deals. It's just mm. the way it is. Yeah. So from there, we then nip down to Abercorn Basin. Uh, which actually gets our best deal award Lord. because although it was actually dearer than both Carrick and um banger because we did get both deals mm -hmm. um it's 18 pounds a night um and you are 10 minutes walk from the city center from a city center so you have got museum it also gets the uniqueness award because i've never seen a pay and display marina before where you go to the machine buy a ticket and stick it to your boat uh so that means that the 18 pounds that you're paying doesn't matter about the size of your boat um, you know, you can be our size boat and you're paying 18, or you can be a bigger boat and you're paying 18. Admittedly, if you're a smaller boat, you'll be paying 18, but... Maybe the size does matter, I don't recall. what uh, the, the machine asked so many questions about the thing, I don't remember exactly what it filled in. Okay, okay, well, I'll, we'll skip that bit then. Yeah. We'll just, it cost us £18 a night, and because we had Karen on board, that meant that it was £6 each. £6 per person to be in the heart of the city and go partying and drinking and eating and... Having a good time, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. So, if you want a good time, this is definitely the place to get. And from there, it was back to Carrick. Um, well, actually, from there, we tried to leave and go out to the RSC, but we changed our mind when we saw the conditions and came back into Carrick. Uh, and that's where we did go to the regatta. Yeah. And uh, like I say, it was really nice to meet up with uh, all the people from Carrot Burgess um, yeah. Yacht Club. Um, we went back to Liverpool. We've gone round uh, Wales. And then our last um, port of entry in Scotland. Uh, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Beep. Beep. So we went round Wales. And then our last uh, port we'd like to mention in Northern Ireland is our class. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get a deal. I can't believe it. No deals. Oh, it's ridiculous. But there we are. More uh, offended, aren't you? I am. However, it was a great place to be. And 
uh, to avoid a storm. Yeah, because we were on a long overnight passage, another one of our famous overnight passages, and we arrived at the crack of dawn and we were just coming past our glass and we both felt a bit tired. So we thought, well, you know what? It's another six or seven hours to get where we're going. We'll pop in here and just take a day out. And we did. And while we were in there, the storm from hail turned up outside. So <laughs> it was definitely good to be in. Yeah, we could have possibly have made it without before the storm, but we just decided, you know, because we were tired. We knew we were tired. Might take the chance. We're you not know, in a rush. We're not in rushing. Um, so we came, uh, went to our glass and, uh, like I say, very good marina. Um, no tea also. Very offended. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to summary, summarise, I'm just cruising in Northern Ireland. Some great deals, especially if you meet people. And great place to meet people. Yeah, it's a great place. So, uh, we recommend it highly. Yeah. That's it really, isn't it? Please say that that worked. <laughs> <laughs>